Okay, so welcome. We're going to start our MSW webinar now. Um, and I will be emailing this PowerPoint to anyone who's registered for this session. So you'll have all this information and a lot of the um, links to our web pages are on um, the slides as well. Um, so I am Maria Costello. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm the temporary program coordinator. I was um, working in the office this summer. Um, my position will be ending at the end of September, but um, I'm doing advising sessions until then. Um, there's Kayla, our assistant director. She uses he, she, her pronouns. Um, and then we'll have our new student information specialist who will be wonderful. Um, there is Alyssa Ledesma who um, will be um, an MSW candidate for 2025. Um, and then Grace Agree, who will be an MSW candidate for 2024. And they will be having, um, they'll be the advisors in the office um, starting at the beginning of October. Um, just wanted to start off real quick with a land acknowledgement. So just acknowledging that UW Seattle campus is situated on the ancestral homeland of the Duwamish people who were the first people of Seattle. Um, and UW acknowledges the past, present, and future of the Coast Salish peoples of this land, the land which touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. And um, if you're interested in exploring this further, um, looking at this realrentduwamish.org. So just to kind of give a little, oh, let's see. Um, just to give a little excerpt of why social work and why we feel um, our school matters and is important. Um, so social work is just rooted in social activism and social change. Um, we're passionate about social justice and trying to make the world better. Um, we're a holistic, strength-based, and unity, unique equity-focused lens. We're trying to represent folks who are typically underrepresented and vulnerable. Um, and MSW is a very versatile degree. It's a huge umbrella of things that you can do in macro, mezzo, and micro level. Um, and our school social work mission is we commit ourselves to promoting social and economic justice for poor and oppressed populations and enhancing the quality of life for all. And just generally, um, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, projected job growth outlook through 2031 is 9% growth for all social workers, which is higher than the projected growth for all US occupations overall. So definitely a growing field and a much needed field and funding is definitely coming available for more social working jobs in the future. Um, so these are some of our social work alumni advocate partners um, that provide advising and mentorship per for prospective and current students. So if you're interested in um, kind of reaching out to one of these folks, um, here's just three that we've highlighted, but there's a lot of different partners that are willing to speak with students if you're interested in kind of what they specialize in and their experience. So um, in this um, PowerPoint that I'll be sending out, there's a there's a link right where it says um, SWAAP, and that's the email as well if you'd like to kind of get further information on that program and, and speak to one of these folks. Um, so looking at UW School Social Work in particular, um, something that's really wonderful is how close our MSW community is. We have a cohort model, which means you go through the program with the same folks. So if you're interested in the two-year program, you're going to have the same individuals in your classes, which is really wonderful, as well as with the three-year program and the advanced standing. So you're all kind of in it together. Um, there's over 15 student clubs and affinity groups that kind of can align with your interests and passion in social work. Um, the average class size is less than 25 students, so quite small class sizes and really allows you to kind of participate in the work and get to know your peers. Um, Looking at our diverse student body, we have one of the most diverse schools on the University of Washington campus. Um, our 2023 to 2024 cohort is 51% people of color. Um, we have many first generation scholars. We're one of the top schools of UW's campus that has um, the most uh, first generation scholars, as well as geographic diversity. Um, depending on the program, almost half of our folks are coming from out of state. So we're kind of all over, um, which is great. Um, and then looking at over 61% of MSW applicants received funding this year. Um, and that was 90% of um, EDP students in particular. So um, definitely lots of funding available for folks in our program. Um, and then we also have um, 14 affiliated UW research and innovation. Oh, 
let me see. Um, areas on our campus, let me just scoot this over, sorry, and innovation centers on our campus. So definitely research is available to you if you're interested in that. And then we're located in the lovely Seattle. Um, <clears throat> so just to talk about our particular programs a little bit, um, for our advanced standing program, which is the one-year program or the 18-month program, if you're doing the part-time, um, the requirement for this one is that you have to hold a bachelor's degree in social work or social welfare from an accredited university. Um, so looking at the part-time program, it's 17 months. Um, it starts in the summer quarter with the full-time summer bridge, which is the same as the full-time advanced standing program. So it's classes for about five days a week um, for the summer quarter. Um, and then the duration of the school year, so from uh, the fall onward for this program, classes are two days a week and practicum is two to three days a week um, for the part-time program. Uh, creating 680 hours over that time period of 17 months. And then for the full-time program, it's an 11 month uh, program. Classes are also two days a week and you're in that practicum three days a week, um, which winds up being 24 hours a week and 680 hours total. And then to look at the day program. So this program begins in the fall quarter, which for us is end of September. Um, the duration of this program is two years. Um, and again, it's that cohort model. So you're going through it with the same folks. Um, and then classes are two to three days per week for this program. And then for the first year, the generalist year, um, practicum will be one to two days per week, totaling 480 hours over the total of that year. And then for year two, it'll be the same as the advanced standing program. So three full eight hour days a week, um, totaling 680 hours over that second year. Um, and then a lot of folks are asking, can you work in the MSW day program? It is a full-time program. Full-time work doesn't always seem to be practical while you're enrolled, but many students do hold part-time jobs, um, typically on evenings or weekends. And I can speak to that a little bit um, in a Q&A session if anyone has any um, questions around that, uh, working while in the program. Um, and then looking at our extended degree program. So that one, um, this is our three year long program. Um, it also begins in the fall quarter. So it has that September start. Um, so it's nine to 11 consecutive quarters, including the summer. Um, so there's two different tracks that you can do in the extended degree program. The evening track has um, evening classes from 6 to 9 p.m. on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, or you can choose the Friday, Saturday track for your classes. So it's four full Fridays and Saturdays per quarter, classes between nine to five um, during that quarter, so four of those. Um, and then practicum will be during weekday daytime hours. Um, so starting in that fourth quarter of the program, um, it will be one to two days per week that you are um, interning. And and then starting in the eighth quarter that you're in the program as well, it is two to three days per week. <clears throat> so many extended degree program students are able to maintain employment through the program. Um, practicum makes it necessary for some students to reduce their work hours. Um, the extended degree program is set up so that you will be able to maintain employment, but it can be a little bit difficult in that um, second section, uh, when, which starts the eighth quarter, because you do need to be um, in your practicum for three eight-hour days per week. So just something to keep in mind when you're going into the program. Um, in terms of our academics, so we're a um, generalist program overall. Um, so that first year um, is considered the generalized year, the generalist year. Um, and so the core, we're looking at like core social work, knowledge and skills, values, ethics, and history. So this is for MSW Day students, that's the first year. For ADP students, it's gonna be the first half of the program. Um, so we're just building kind of generalist skills, knowledge, and confidence. We're involved in micro, mezzo, and macro work. Um, and so you're just kind of getting getting a taste of what social work actually is and what it means to be a social worker, as well as different fields that you can go into. So kind of exploring where you fit in, in the world of social work. And then um, you will be matched with a field faculty member to help plan your um, generalist placement. So that first placement that you're in for less hours is hopefully going to give you a taste of micro, mezzo, and macro social work. Um, and then looking at the specialized year or the second year for the day students or the second half of the EDP program. So um, this will be specialized social work focus and practice. So 
Um, for extended students, this will be clinical. For day students, you have um, three different specializations you can choose from, as well as advanced standing. So there's the administration and policy practice, which is that macro lens looking at um, policy level work um, and larger scale systemic issues. Um, and then the community-centered integrative practice specialization that's working on um, community-based work research and um, political organizing within communities and um, improving communities. And then that, um, clinical specialization, which is on that micro work, which can look like a lot of different things, hospitals, schools, therapy. Um, so uh, this will be everything after summer bridge for the advanced standing students. Um, and then your specialist practicum is at a new site that's aligned with your chosen specialization area. And you have a significant input in selecting your practicum site um, with field faculty support if you need it. So essentially um, you're kind of looking at the list of um, practicum sites and really choosing what works for you and going through the interview process with these places. And again, I can speak a little more to the specifics of that process if anyone has questions um, during Q&A. Um, and then there's also the option of having a focus with Latinx communities. Um, so all MSW students are eligible to choose an additional Latinx focus during their specialist experience. Um, so this traineeships offers seminars and advanced skills for students committed to the health and well-being of Latinx communities. Um, and there's also funding opportunities available within that, um, that traineeship. So if that is an area of interest that is available to you. So just looking at samples of um, different practicum sites. Um, so we have over 600 field sites for BASW and MSW students. I think this is one of the huge strengths of UW's program is the wide variety of um, practicum placements in different locations. Um, I think it's really wonderful and a huge asset to the program for folks wanting to explore different arenas of social work. Um, in terms of clinical work, there's Sound Mental Health, um, Asian Counseling and Referral Service, Harborview Medical Intensive Care Unit, Youth East Side Services, Stepping Stones Pediatric Palliative Care and Hospice. Um, there's so many more, a huge, huge variety. Um, and then in terms of direct service, some sites, for example, are um, communities and schools, um, the Edmond School District, the United Way of King County Community Services, King County Superior Court, Youth and Family, um, LifeWire Together Against Domestic Violence. And then looking at community and policy um, placements, there's Social Justice Fund Northwest, Statewide Poverty Action Network, King County Public Health, Environmental Services, the UW Resilience Lab, and the Washington State House of Representatives, which is a really cool placement um, in the Capitol. So um, there's a link here, which again, this will be sent out to you for you to look at a more detailed list. And if you have specific interests on that list, you can uh, utilize the search function. So if you really are interested in working in schools, you can look up schools or um, therapy or working with um, folks experiencing homelessness. That's all kind of things that you can type into the search bar and find a good fit for you and see if we have a practicum site that matches your interest. Um, and then I spoke to this a little bit, but again, here's our specialization. So for the part-time programs, which are part-time advanced standing and EDP, the specialization available is clinical social work. So this is just preparing students for direct practice with individuals of all ages, families, and small groups. Um, the admin and policy practice, which I talked about that APP, um, leadership roles in human service organizations, and then working with policy and systems that are larger. Um, Community-centered integrative practice, again, um, social work pro practice kind of against the three and or across the three levels of social work and very much so a community-based specialization. And then clinical social work is again, preparing students for that direct practice. Um, so looking at some deadlines for our fall 2024 um, application cycle. So um, the day in advanced standing programs, the deadline is January 16th, 2024. The extended degree program. So the priority deadline is January 16th, 2024. And the final deadline is February 15th, 2024, if space permits. So folks who apply by that first deadline will have priority for admission. Um, so just so y'all are aware of that. And then most students receive a decision about um, their status in March. Looking at some of the cohort statistics for this past um, 
fall. Um, our advanced standing folks, the average age is 29. In the day program, the average age is 27. And in the extended degree program, the average age is 33. Um, and then just looking at our kind of spread of Washington state residents, there's about 70% Washington state re residents in advanced standing, 55% in day and 90% in EDP. So lots of folks coming from out of state. Um, median social service hours um, for the program. So uh, median for advanced standing students was 4,994 hours. Day was 5,100. 56 hours and extended degree was 8,466 hours um, of social service experience. And then our acceptance rate for each of the programs for the advanced standing was 73%, the day was 61%, and the extended degree was 83%. <laughs> and just emphasizing in terms of the social service hours, these are averages, not expectations. So there's a lot of folks that come into our program coming from a whole variety of backgrounds, um, and it is not mandatory that you've been a social worker for the last 10 years or anything like that. Um, just kind of looking at the average information here. Um, so our eligibility and prerequisites, um, the minimum admission requirements are a four-year baccalaureate degree from an accredited institution. Um, just a note here, as of last year, we actually are able to petition applicants who don't have a four-year degree. So please email us for more information if this applies to you and see if you would be eligible for that process. Um, <clears throat> typically a minimum of a 3.0 GPA, um, the UW Graduate School affords departments the right to petition. So if you do not have a 3.0 GPA, um, you may have seen this, but in our application, there's actually an area to kind of explain um, why you don't have that 3.0 um, and just kind of creating some space for us to look at your application holistically and, and understanding um, that night might not have been attainable for everyone. So we're looking at that with a social work lens too. Um, English proficiency, um, we require anyone meeting proficiency through test scores to obtain the recommended score or higher. So there's a link there. Again, this will be sent out um, for you to kind of get more information around that. And then our application process. So um, we are, our portal, we're using two different portals based on the application that you're um, utilizing for this year, but you're applying via the link that you find online and creating your um, portal information. It's an $85 application fee. Um, if you are in need of a fee waiver, the info is available on the UW Graduate School website. Um, and then you must also upload your unofficial transcripts. Um, it's actually okay to just upload the one from your most current school if it fully lists your courses and credits from other schools. So if you've gotten to multiple schools and it's all in one transcript, you can upload that. Unfortunately, if that information isn't on the most current transcript, you will have to upload all of the transcripts. Um, then your resume and then your social service experience form. Um, so again, this is all available on our, on our webpage, all of these forms that you'll need to fill out. Um, so you'll calculate your experience hours per week and describe how that experience relates to social work practice. Um, and then your personal statement, which the instructions are on our um, website as well in the application section. Um, and then you must also designate three required references. So when you put in their emails to the application, it immediately um, sends an email to them um, for the, them to fill out our um, forms and information to recommend you. Um, and then no more than three references are accepted. And then some application tips. Um, so our application process is holistic. Um, so looking at evidence of academic preparation and potential for graduate school, um, social service experience and fit for social work, your commitment to social justice and underserved communities. We're kind of looking at all things. Um, so definitely don't feel stuck if you feel like you don't have a lot of hours yet or your GPA isn't quite there. Um, we're definitely looking at this on the whole and there's space in your personal statement to talk about um, where your passion for social justice is. And that's definitely something that we're looking for. Um, also designating your references early. Um, we would just advise that. Um, choose folks who will speak to your fit for the program and the field. Um, and then um, owning your strengths. Don't doubt yourself or let imposter syndrome prevent applying and pursuing your aspirations. I think now is a great time to apply if you're interested. Um, 
I think it definitely can seem extremely intimidating to go into higher education. I was very nervous as well, but know that social workers are looking over your application. And so we're looking at this from a holistic lens as previously stated, and we're considering all factors. It's not super rigid. So definitely give yourself a chance. Um, and then we also advise applying early um, don't rush or wait until deadline week. Although we don't do rolling admission here and applying early does not increase your admission chances, it can reduce your stress level um, coming up to the deadline. So um, just going over generally our funding and financial aid opportunities. Um, one of our wonderful folks in the uh, financial, or not in the financial aid, in the admissions office, just updated our funding our education page, your MSW funding page. So I would really encourage you to um, go to that page because it has some excellent information and breaks down all these things that I'm going to briefly go over. Um, again, there's there's space at the end of this if you have specific questions for me about funding that I can answer to the best of my ability. But a lot of that great information is on our newly updated site. Um, so. Our funding consideration form, it's on our application um, and it is an optional part. Um, it appears as a Google form. I would really strongly encourage folks to fill that out. Um, it, it allows you to be considered for award amounts from the School of Social Work and Scholarships. So I would definitely encourage you to um, fill that out if you are needing funding. Um, and that is due January 16th, um, along with the rest of the application. And then, um, talking about how 61% of our folks receive um, financial aid and awards. The average award amount for our folks was $11,615 a year. Um, so really strongly advising doing that funding consideration form and filling out your FAFSA as well. Um, FAFSA and WASPA, the FAFSA is being updated this year and will be available in December from what the admissions team has told me. Um, recommended submission uh, for our school is by January 16th. The UW priority deadline is February 28th for this year. Um, and then looking at graduate assistantships, again, there's a, a little excerpt on the Funding Your Education page, which I would strongly advise you to look at. Um, so there are assistantships in and out of the School of Social Work. Um, I was a student information specialist with the admissions office last year. Um, and essentially, they, a lot of these assistantships will come with tuition waivers, which is amazing, um, as well as a stipend. Um, and so deadlines and availability vary based on which ones you're applying for. But that's definitely something um, we encourage folks to look into if they're trying to find help with tuition. Um, and then in terms of traineeship opportunities, the School of Social Work has a handful of traineeships um, that may come with funding. Um, so the Child Welfare, um, the CTAP agreement, um, they help with a portion of your tuition if you agree to work for um, the Department of Children, Youth, and Families after graduation. Um, we have the WDI um, Behavioral Health Initiative. Um, they offer funding as well if you agree to work with uh, folks struggling with behavioral health issues and have a list of um, approved practicum sites. Um, there's also a traineeship around oncology and palliative care, which is uh, getting you kind of workforce ready. And then I mentioned the Latinx traineeship as well. So um, definitely would encourage you to look into those and again visit that MSW funding page. Um, there's also um, Leadership Without Borders, GFIS, and um, we call them GC, the Graduate Student Equity and Excellent Office, um, and they help um, students of color with um, funding opportunities and getting engaged with the community. So I would definitely encourage students to look into GC. GFIS is Graduate Funding Information Services, and um, they have a ton of wonderful information around assistantships, scholarships, um, different ways to get funding in the school. So would really encourage you to um, go to their website and explore that department of UW as well. Um, so looking at the breakdown of estimated tuition and fees for this 2023 to 2024 year, um, so for a resident in the full-time advanced standing program, it's $32,000 a year. For a non-resident, it's $54,000 a year. And an international student, we estimate about $57,000 a year. For the day program, the full two years, um, it, we're estimating about $48,000 for a resident. A non-resident would be about 80,000 and international would be about 83,000. Now the part-time advanced standing and the extended degree program, both those part-time programs are fee-based. So you're paying per credit. So they're the same across the board. So for a part-time advanced standing individual, a resident, non-resident and international student would all pay 48,000. 
for the extended degree program, again, we're going by credit, um, it, we're estimating about 75,000 for both a resident, non-resident, and international student. Um, so again, the, um, the paying per credit, the current UW rate um, is $912 per um, credit and then paying some fees as well. Um, and that credit load varies per quarter in the program. So we will now be kind of getting into our Q&A section, um, but here is the link for our admissions calendar where you can set up a Zoom or phone advising appointment. Um, if you're doing it this month, it would be with me. Um, after this, it'll be with one of our student information specialists or with Kayla um, or some of our other folks in the admissions office. And then um, that also has our calendar of information sessions, events, um, virtual grad school fairs, et cetera. Um, and then you're also able to join our electronic mailing list, um, signing up and we'll remind you when applications become available, upcoming deadlines, things like that. Um, and then following our Instagram, it's at UW Social Work. We do student takeovers, news, photos, um, different interventions. So there's a lot of fun stuff on our Instagram page. And then emailing us, uwsocialwork at uw.edu. Um, I'm going to head, go ahead and stop the recording now so that um, I'll be able to open it up for Q&A and I will check the chat. <laughs> 